Hello, my name is Ryan Page, and I'm an application specialist for Techless Structures. Today in this video, we will be discussing basic reinforcement of cylindrical objects. Specifically, we will be using a ring wall foundation as our example. Topics in this video include create a 360 degree, 2 foot 6 deep ring wall foundation, add longitudinal reinforcement with rebar sets, add stirrups using single bar. Distribute stirrups evenly using Copy Special Rotate. Tools utilized in this video include Construction Object Arc, Copy Special Rotate, Move Special Rotate, Rebar Sets Create Longitudinal Rebar, Rebar Single Bar. For today's example, we have established a radial grid with four azimuths at the cardinal directions and two outer rings. The specific settings for the grid can be seen here to the right. The outermost ring has a radius of 48 feet, and the inner ring's radius is 46 feet 4 inches. Additionally, I've already gone ahead and modeled our concrete. The ring wall has a diameter of 96 feet, with a width of 20 inches, and with a depth of 2 feet 6 inches. It was created using the concrete beam tool and the tube profile as seen here in the properties pane. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is add horizontal or longitudinal reinforcement to the ring wall. To do this, we're going to go up to the concrete ribbon. Then we're going to click rebar set and select create longitudinal rebar. Now before we apply the rebar, let's go ahead and adjust our settings. Let's go to the properties pane and drop down and select continuous bar. And then change the bar size from number 4 to number 7 main bar. Now let's hover over our concrete and click. Now we're going to hold down control and click both sides, and then click the middle mouse wheel to place our bar, and we can interrupt the command. Now that we have our horizontal reinforcement placed, we're going to need to add our splice zones. Rebar sets have a splitter tool that makes splices pretty easy. This tool will actually add the splice lengths to our bar, so we need to consider that as well as what our bar stock length is when deciding where to put our splices. So let's go ahead and assume that our stock length is 30 feet and that for the number 7 horizontal bar, our splice length is going to be 4 foot 7. So we don't want to place our splices 30 feet apart on an arc length, as that would give us a 34 foot 7 inch bar length. We need to subtract that splice from the total stock length, so that would give us a total of 25 feet 5 inches for the required arc length or spacing around our ring wall where we need to place our splices. So with that said, let's go ahead and put it in practice. Let's start out by just placing a splice. Let's go ahead and select our reinforcement, and then come up to the rebar set contextual menu and select splitter, and then let's go ahead and just drop that right in at the zero azimuth. Now that we have our first splice placed at our zero azimuth, we can now go ahead and calculate where the next one needs to be. We can use the construction arc tool to do this pretty easily. Go to the edit ribbon, then Construction Object, and then select Arc. And then we're going to pick our starting point at the center here, and then we're going to ensure that we're creating the arc by center and end points. And the field to the right, we can supply what we want our arc length to be. Start on the zero degree azimuth, and make sure we have nearest snapping turned on, and click on the inside edge of the exterior rebar. Now as we click, and then zoom out, and move our cursor up, you can see Tecla snaps to that arc length of 25 foot 5. In addition to the arc length, Tecla is also giving us the angle of rotation to achieve that arc length, and we want to make note of that value. However, if we forget to do so, we can just simply use the measure angle tool and snap to the ends of our arc. So let's interrupt the command and select our arc, and then we can come back to the edit ribbon and go to measure, angle, click the center point, the end point of the arc, and then the other end. So 30.4779 degrees. Now that we have our angle of rotation for the outside facing bar to achieve our arc length, we can now go ahead and select our splitter, and then right click and select Copy Special Rotate. Now let's pick our rotation origin at the center of our grid, and then specify the angle to be 30.47779, and we'll keep the number of copies at 1. Now that we've copied the splitter, I'm going to go ahead and switch my selection type to Rebar Group and then select the spliced bar that we just created and check its length in the custom inquiry side pane. So now what we need to do is just copy those splices all the way around the outside face. 
We can just divide 360 by our angle of rotation, which gives us about 11.8. Uh, we already placed one splice in there, so that gives us 10 points. So we're going to have a remainder where some of the bar is going to need to be cut, but the rest of them are going to be pretty uniform stock length. So we'll copy that 10 more times around. Now all that remains is to repeat the same process for the interior face and those horizontal reinforcing bars. Now that we have our horizontal bar and splices placed, we need to add our ties. Rebar sets are great at reading the geometry of concrete parts and then providing reinforcement, but due to this concrete being a cylindrical, we may not get the results we are looking for. So instead, what we'll do is we're just going to create a single bar for our tie and then copy rotate it into place as many times as we need. The easiest way to go about this is to model the tie at one of the cardinal azimuths. Let's use azimuth zero. We also need to create an elevated view to make creating the bar a bit easier. So let's go up to our view ribbon and select new view, two points, and create a view along azimuth zero. I'm also going to go ahead and tighten up my work area, so I'm going to go up to the view ribbon and select work area by two points and then just create a crossing window over my area here. This will help keep things clean and easy if I'm snapping back to plane by hitting Control P. Now that we have our view, let's go to the concrete ribbon, select rebar, and then bar. Over in the properties pane, let's go ahead and load up the tie bar preset from the drop down, and we'll leave the bar size at number four. Now, simply select the concrete you want to reinforce, in this case our ring wong foundation, and then specify the bar shape. For this tie, we are going to ensure we're specifying uh, the shape on all four sides of the concrete so that our end point is the same as our start point. This will give us an overlap at the top left corner where we can provide either 90 degree or 135 degree hooks. Once you're done picking the shape, simply click the middle mouse wheel to complete. Now that the bar is placed, let's make some quick adjustments. Let's change the hooks to a standard 90 degrees. and we'll also adjust the cover thickness. Now I'm going to zero out from plane as I want the tie bar to sit right on top of azimuth zero. Then I'm also going to adjust the start and ends to have a cover of one inch. The tie bar looks pretty good, but we could definitely nudge our horizontal reinforcement to fit more uniformly. We can just simply select these sets from both faces and adjust the end offset to even out the placement. Let's start with an extra one inch and see how that looks. You know what, it looks pretty good. So the last thing we need to do is copy the tie around our concrete. So we select the bar, right click and hit copy special rotate. Let's specify our point of origin and let's say we're going to place one of these at every degree. Since we already have one, we'll need an additional 359 more copies. So let's populate that there and then click copy. And there we are, a simple reinforced ring wall foundation. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video, please see the information listed in the description. For other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.